Next we're going to do is we're going to look at how to add and subtract radicals. So to be able to do this we need a couple things. So we need to have the same index. If you do not have the same index then you cannot add and subtract radicals. What we also need is we need to have the same radicand. And what we're going to do once we're able to achieve these two things then we will add and subtract the radicals. The index and the radical uh, radicand will actually stay the same. And just a little bit, I mean you guys kind of know this, it just usually looks in a different form. So if you have 2x uh, plus 3x, what you actually will get is 5x. And the way that you get that is you're going to add your coefficients and then the variable of x stays the same. So you would say 2 plus 3 will give us 5 and the x remains the same. So we're going to use that same background knowledge to be able to do the problems that we're going to do. Now if I gave you this, 2x plus 3y, you would know that you can't add those two things together. So we'll look at a couple examples of how to add and subtract radicals. Uh, we have 7 square root of 2 plus 5 square root of 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to add these together. Now to do that we need the same index and the same radicand. Neither of these have an index written, <coughs> so the assumption is it's 2. And both of these have a radicand that's 2. So we already have that. So all we're going to do is we're going to add our coefficients. 7 plus 5 is 12. And then our index and radicand will stay the same. So that will be 12 square root of 2. Here, as you can see, uh, we have the same index of 2, and we have the same radicand of 5x. So what we're going to do is we're going to add or subtract our coefficients. The coefficient here is 1, so 1 minus 7 will give us negative 6. Our index remains the same, it's still going to be 2, and our radicand is going to remain the same. So it will be uh, negative 6 square root of 5x. Let's see if we can't look at a little bit more of a complicated type problem. Now, the one issue uh, with this one that we did not have with the last one is now our indexes are the same, but our radicals are not. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to simplify this so that we end up with the same radicand. All right. Well, what I would do, I usually start with the smaller or the easier one for me to simplify. Well, 3, 3 is the smaller number, so is 3 a perfect square? The answer is no. Are there any factors of 3 that are? The answer is also no. So I can't simplify this radical here, but this one I can. 12 is not a perfect square, but there is a factor of 12 that is. It's 4. So 4 times 3 will give me 12. The square root of 4, of course, being 2. So this radical will simplify to 2 times the square root of 3. And then, as you can see, now we actually got our radicals to be the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our coefficients. Nine, or 7 plus 2 will give me 9 square root of 3. Notice my index stays the same and my radicand stays the same also. Last example, as you can see we've kicked it up a notch but that's okay. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to add these radicals together. Uh, looking at this, I'm actually going to use the larger one. And the reason I'm going to try to simplify this one first is because I, 50 is easy for me to find a perfect square. But right now, my index is the same, my radicals, radicands are not, so I'm going to try to simplify these. So what I'll do is I'll say 4x, 50 is not a perfect square, but I know 25 is, and it will go into 50, and it will go into 52 times. Now x, I only have one x. Well, to be able to take the square root of a variable, I need at least the same number uh, in the exponent as my index. So the minimum x's that I could take the square root of would be uh, x squared. Since I only have one x and not two, I'm going to group that with uh, that right there. So we have 4x. Now the square root of 25 is 5. The coefficient multiplies the radical. Okay, So when I simplify the 25, I'm actually going to multiply it by the pre-existing coefficient. So when I multiply these two together, it will give me 20x square root of 2x. Alright, now on to the next one. So what I'll do next is I'll try to simplify the other one. Now my goal is I really want my radicand to be able to be 2x. If I can't get it to be 2x, then I'm not going to be able to add and subtract these radicals. So I'm just going to kind of keep that in the back of my mind. So, you know, if there's a chance, I really want to get 2x here. Let's see if it works out. 32 is not a perfect square. However, there are factors of 32 that are perfect squares. 16 is a factor of 32. So we'll put 16 here. And 16 times 2 will give me 32. So that's a good sign. I have x to the third that I'm trying to take the square root of. Uh, because it's larger than my index, I can break it up. 
and uh, I can take the square root of x squared and that leaves me an x over here. So what I'll do is I'll just say negative 6. The square root of this is 4x. Since I had a pre-existing coefficient, I'm going to multiply these two things together. That's going to give me negative 24x square root of 2x. Now I have the same index and the same uh, radicand, so now I can actually add these two things together. Uh, when I do that, all I'm going to do is add my coefficients. So negative 20x, I mean positive 20x and negative 24x will give me negative 4x times the square root of 2x. Remember when you add them together, your index and your radicand do not change.